Well, how long am I up here for? I need some time. I just want to be strong now that it's just the two of us, okay? Do you have a boyfriend? Well, I imagine all the guys will be chasing you. You know, I read a lot of amateur screen uh, screenplays, and dialogue is usually uh, a curse for a lot of films because it's used too much. Mm -hmm. for you, I feel like you used it so tastefully. Mm -hmm. And whenever things that we saw that did not need to be said were not said. And right. I can name a few scenes in the movie where I really felt that way, but I'm sure you know. So, right yeah, now, that was definitely on purpose. I mean, on one on one hand, you can say, well, if you can't say the if you can't write the right dialogue or you can't put the right words in, then then figure out something else to do. I mean, that's you, you know, you can sort of cheat the system that way, I suppose. But I I, I think that. Um, as a, you know, as a creative person, I like subtlety and I like moments of quiet and I like what happens when people are waiting. I think there's a suspense that builds when someone wants something to be said and it's not. Um, and, and also I think the movie reflects, the story of the movie and the social issue reflects on the silence. Um, you know, girls don't talk about what happened to them. Um, it's just not something that they do. And so there's a, there's a reflection in, in speaking about the issue or not speaking about the issue in the fact that they don't talk about it in the movie. Um, and, 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 you know, dialogue, it, it, I just think, um, you know, Hitchcock always said you should be able to show it. This is cinema, you know. Now, that said, I love a Woody Allen movie and stuff like that, and I, you know, that's not my style, and I don't know if I could pull it off, so... You know, I just stick with you, stick to your talents, I guess. Yeah, I think that there's films that where the dialogue moves the story along and moves things mm -hmm. along, but if it is for a film like yours, it is a bit, you do see it, so we don't need to hear it. Yeah. And especially in scenes like when the uncle molests Mackenzie. Right. Where she lays there, and I mm -hmm. felt like that suddenly became something out of real life for me, because I'm hearing, hearing true accounts of similar mm -hmm. situations. Exactly. Where you don't know what to say, you walk up, right. there is no words. Right, you. yeah. Yeah, that was something that I heard early on when I was doing research and, and, and talking with people and someone told me a story where nothing was said. And I thought, well, that makes perfect sense. You know, the, you would just be so dumbfounded, especially as a young person, you know, so intimidated and so, you know, nervous. And, you know, it's not like you would say, oh, no, stop. Or, you know, you just, not, you know, it just becomes this incredibly awkward intimate but incredibly disturbing offensive act you know yeah and there's nothing to be said for it what was it like dealing with that with a uh, young actress dealing with those tender kind of subjects uh, ella purnell who plays mckinsey and her her mom who was sort of her chaperone through the whole project they were totally gung-ho in in putting the you know the, um the acting first and putting the message in the film out there and embracing you know, playing this role and going through that. So there was never really any pushback about, you know, what was going on screen and what was going in, into the role at all. Um, so sh they were super about it. I, I decided early on the best way to approach it was just very mechanical. You know, um, I don't do a lot with storyboards and, and I mean, I, I make them and I'm, a, I'm, I, I'm someone who draws and, and paints, so I, I like doing them. But for this scene, I was very mechanical. I'd, I did storyboard showing exactly what we were going to see in the frame. You know, Uncle's hand's going to be here. And I sat everyone down with the AD and the cinematographer and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shoot this scene, sh this shot. And then we're going to change and we're going to shoot this shot. So it was done without emotion. It was done mechanically for that sequence. When the credits rolled and I looked back on the film, I felt, OK, well, there's nothing conceptually um, I guess that I haven't seen in film before, and yet the film as, in, as a whole felt fresh and new, and it stuck with me. Like uh, yeah. films that deal with similar subject matters, being on the road, learning from nature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. child molestation. Mm -hmm. you know, it, this one stood out. Ex can you explain why this one stands out? <laughs> well, that's what I, that was intentional. I mean, that goes back to your original question. You know, how did you pull off first feature? I, I when I went into the project, I thought, well, if I'm going to do a first feature, I should, to the best of my ability, try to make it stand out as unique. And, you know, I thought the way that we approached uh, the sexual assault was unique. Obviously, going to Alaska was fairly unique. I mean, there's a lot of it on TV, but not quite in this way. Um, and, then, and, then, and then inside the journey that, that McKinsey and that Bart take, I tried to turn the audiences in different directions where they didn't quite expect to go, you know, all the way through to the end. You know, and I think that keeps it fresh. 
So while I was writing it, I had that exact thought. I thought, well, we've seen this before, like grumpy old guy and young kid on a road trip together. I think there's like 12 comedies that have that premise, you know, but at the same time, we knew that was, this was not that. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's just a matter of mushing some genres together and hoping that it works out. Sure. You're an NYU man. Yes, very what, much. What has film school contributed to your career, your life here? Focusing me, getting structured, just having a plan of action, I think, has been, been probably the biggest part of it. And I like NYU's approach to what they call the auteur theory, where they really want to teach you all aspects of filmmaking so that when you go onto a set or when you go in to make your own movie, you could play all those roles yourself if you wanted, or when you have people that you're working with, you at least have an idea of what they're doing and what they're contributing and, and why it might be working or not working. And I think that that's a really smart way to go about it. You made it through your first feature. A lot of, for a lot of people, that's the beginning of the pain. <laughs> like, so what, I mean, what is the continuation? It is the beginning of the pain because now I'm like, now I'm thinking, what am I working on next? I've got four different scripts in various stages from you know well into redrafts to things that are just notes and I vacillate between which one I'm more enthusiastic about and I vacillate between which one is the right next step you know do you go slightly more commercial or do you you know do something you're more passionate about or you know how do you follow going to Alaska where is the location going to be so yeah it's you know not to mention that as as anyone who's gone through the process knows you know, Wildlife's had great success, and I'm really happy with what's happened with it, but it's not like it's handing me, you know, a blank check to go out and make a new movie. I have to start the whole process over again. Write a script, find the actors, find the money, all that. Yeah. One of my biggest influences is um, Ingmar Bergman. A lot of silence in his films. Neo, what I would call neo-real directors like Kelly Reichert and Rami and Barani and, and those folks. So I, I would like to stay in a, in a natural, authentic you know, direction, but I've also um, got aspirations to do things a little bit more, not more commercial or more big budget, but maybe a little, little, little flashier, a little darker. I'm also a big fan of Gaspar Noé and, and his work. Made wild like much different than you. <laughs> <laughs>